episode, we are with Cynthia Smoot. Um, we're going to change gears a little bit. We're going to talk about reality TV. And so let's jump into it. Um, my main question is, when you watch reality TV, is it real or is it scripted? That is a great question, and it's probably the most common question I get asked. Yeah. Um, on my blog, Osa Cynthia, I talk a lot about all the reality TV shows that film in Dallas, and there have been many. <laughs> Big Rich Texas, Most yes. Eligible Dallas, um, Lowe's, and of course, the one that we have going on right now is Real Housewives of Dallas on Bravo. Yes. So they're all called reality TV, but is it really real? That's yeah. the most common question, and the answer is yes and no. Oh, okay. So, you know, do they hand you a script and say study your lines for tomorrow? No. Okay. So it is real in the sense that they are truly filming this group of women and their interactions with each other. So how you see them play off of each other and react is very real. Okay. However, it is Scripted isn't the right word, but, it, you know, it's definitely structured in the sense that they, so, for instance, at the beginning of the season, before they even start filming, they meet with each of the women and they say, okay, Nancy, tell me what you have going on. Okay. And you might say, you know what, I just started this podcast, here's what it's about, here are two or three people I have lined up to interview and we're going to be going to these events, and they're like, okay. Then they would come to me and say, okay, Cynthia, what are you doing? What events are you going to? Okay, well, we need you to go to these two events that Nancy's wow. going to be at. So they've got to figure out a way to make this cast come together and organize as a cohesive it. group. Got it. Because they are not necessarily all friends in real lives, and so yes. it's not a natural cohesive group. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, if you know, two of the housewives are cheering a gala, you can be rest assured that the rest of the cast will be attending. <laughs> that would not naturally happen in real life, but it's happening right. because the producers have told you you will be attending. Now, right. what happens at that event is totally we'll up to happens, you. We'll see what happens, right? They basically throw you in a room and they just say, go. Oh, my goodness. So in that sense, it is very real. Yes. Um, however, the next day, we might have a scene and they would say, Okay, Cynthia, you and Nancy kind of got into a fight at that party Saturday night, and right. so we need for you guys to resolve it at this lunch. You need to bring up the issue that you had with oh her, and then we want to see it play out. So you are giving direction, okay? but they're not telling you what to say. I mean, I think the thing you have to think is that it has the story has to make sense for the viewers. Right. So if they filmed us having a quarrel at an event, and then I called you on the phone the next day and we worked it out, yeah, that's great for you and I in real life. The problem is the viewers are like, well, what the heck happened? You were talking oh, one I minute and saying. then you had a fight. And now you're not talking. So they have to be able to show right. what's happening. And so sometimes that means, you know, like they, a lot of times they will, they will literally, <laughs> nobody's playing with you right now. <laughs> we're busy. A lot of times they will literally say, do not talk off camera. If you have really? something to say, wait for the cameras to roll. So... Are the relationships and the emotions real, though? Um, yes. I mean, yes. It's it, These women all have authentic relationships, okay. and what you're seeing is real. Now, okay. if the show gets canceled tomorrow, would they still have the same relationships? Maybe. Probably not. But it's in the same way of, like, you know, I'm sure you've had friends at a job before, and when you leave that job six months later, are you right. still friends with those people? Right. Not right, necessarily, right. because you're not interacting with them on a daily basis. Right. And once that common denominator is removed, the friendship kind of dissolves. Gotcha. It would be the same way as the show. So then, is there a casting process? Oh, for sure. I mean, okay. especially on a show like Real Housewives of Dallas, <laughs> there's an extensive casting process. Okay. So what happens is... First of all, the show was never pitched as Real Housewives of Dallas. It was just pitched as, it was initially pitched as a show called How to Make It in Dallas, and it was Whoa. supposed to revolve around the charity scene. Okay. That was the pitch. Okay. And so the casting agent is then brought in and, and told, you know, here's the concept of the show we want to pitch. Um, find us people. And so, you know, they will you know, start reaching out to different people. And once they find somebody that they like, they'll say, Nancy, you know, we think you'd be great for this show. Who else do you know that you might want to oh. film with? And they basically get you to bring in your friends. Gotcha. And so it's sort of like, you know, that old Prell commercial, you know, and she <laughs> told two friends and so on and so yep. on. And it kind of starts rippling out from yeah. there. And, um, you know, and then from there they will pick 10 or 12 women they like to have a Skype interview with the producer. The producer then narrows it down. Those, you know, some people get um, 
film tested. They'll come to your house and kind of film. You know, so there's sort of different levels you have to go through before they actually take those video interviews and narrow it down and decide. And then they also have to look at, you know, they may love you, but you may not fit with the other characters on the show. And so gotcha. it kind of all has to gel into this formula. Wow. So I think with a show like Real Housewives, I mean, they're looking for dynamic, type A women yeah. who are not afraid to speak their mind, who right. have a lot going on, and then they're going to throw you in with a bunch of other women who are exactly the same, and that's where the fireworks and the magic happens. Wow. So are there moments, do you think, where it's really overboard or cajoled in a situation where they want it to go overboard? Well, duh. I mean, that's just good TV. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> if we all sat around and, you know, drank tea and ate cookies, that's it'd true. be boring. That's true. I mean, you have to have drama and conflict or yeah. it's not entertaining. That's true. So then... Were you ever asked to be on the show? Um, I, well, so the interesting thing is in the very beginning, I had a client who was a realtor and she was being approached for the show. So oh. I was sort of acting as her agent and sort of negotiating her whole interview process. Got it. Um, and in the process of, of that negotiation, the casting agent was asking me because she knew I wrote the blog, yeah. you know, who else do you know? Who else do you think I should be talking to? And at one point she was like, why are you not <laughs> asking me to be on this show? She's yeah. like, you're perfect for this. Why, you know? Yeah. And, uh, and I said, you know what? That, I, I'm flattered. Thank you so much. <laughs> but, you know, I prefer to watch the train wreck, not be in it. <laughs> it's a lot more fun to be behind the scenes yes. and to be a fly on the wall. Yes. In my opinion. Yes. Um, so I, I just chose, and also I think the thing you have to realize with this particular show, mm -hmm. it's not only you that has to buy into it, but Bravo really wants to film your whole life. That includes your husband mm -hmm. and your kids. And that so if there's not a buy-in from the whole family, it's not going to happen. Yeah. Um, I mean, in some instances, they let you leave your kids out of it if they're little or, you know, um, but for the most part, you know, they're filming your whole family. Wow. And so in my particular situation, my husband and son were like, eh, you know. <laughs> not happening. And they were like, listen, if you want to go get all crunk and turned up <laughs> on TV, you knock yourself out. But that is not for us. Oh. So it just, that particular show was not a fit for me. Not to say I would not consider doing reality TV in the future. Yes, I think she'd be great for it. If it was right. But, um... <laughs> So that's how I got involved. So I was actually really intricately involved in the casting process from the get-go, um, sort of by happenstance. Yeah. And then it turned out that a couple of my really good friends got cast on the show, which wow. is how I ended up so involved in the actual filming. Right. Because I was just attending a lot of the events with them. And so I sort of had this inside track to what was happening behind the scenes from right. that experience. So we're in season two now. Mm -hmm. Are we going to see you on the show? Yeah. So the funny thing is, after last year, like there was literally so much drama. I said, like, I got, I can't do it. Like, I'm out. <laughs> really? Like it, it was too much. Aww. It was crazy, and um, and then I went to. So I literally went to one party yeah. this year. Two. I went to two parties this year. And one of the scenes that I'm in ended up in my, so one of my best friends is Leanne Locken, who's mm -hmm. one of the main characters. I ended up in her intro scene, so <laughs> liter which literally means in every single episode when they're introducing her, you see me, like standing right beside her That's and weird. her partner, Rich. So I can technically say I am in every single show this well, season. Well, yeah, you are. Way to go low key. <laughs> no. So it kind of worked out. That's so So I'm funny. in every show, but I'm not involved in any of the drama. It's sort of the perfect scenario See, that's for me. the perk right there. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. All right. So any other reality shows coming to Dallas? Are, does it happen where, you know, now we have Real Housewives of Dallas, and then it kind of spreads from there where you get more ideas for new shows? Well, I think Dallas is a hotbed for casting. We always have been. And, um, because, you know, Texas is just in general known for our larger-than-life personalities, yeah. our sort of over-the-top lifestyle. Everything's yeah. bigger in Texas. Yes. Um, you know, and really kicking off with Dallas in the, when was that, late 70s, early 80s? I mean, that really sort of solidified Dallas as the entertainment capital of the South. Right. Um, and so I think you see a lot of shows, whether it's, you know, American Idol, You Think You Can Dance, Top Chef, 
all of those shows when they're doing their casting rounds have Dallas as a stop, which is why you always have Texas contestants on those shows. Hmm. Um, we're just interesting characters. I agree. And also, I would say with The Bachelor and The Bachelorette, this is like a hotbed for contestants from there too. Yes, absolutely. I mean, there literally is no reality show that is not looking in Dallas for contestants or participants. I mean, we have brains, beauty, personality. Yes. You can find it all here. <laughs> so and we're not afraid to put it all on display. That is very true. <laughs> very prideful in what we do. Um, so if a um, television station wanted to do a show with you in particular, would, would you be up for something like that? Would you be game? Well, I think it would depend on what the show is. Yeah, that makes sense. You know, like to me, there's a difference in a show like, um, for instance, The Realtor that I was working with, who ended yeah. up getting cast and then she pulled out at the last minute oh. of Real Housewives because she just got cold feet. However, they came back around for her when they were thinking about doing million dollar listings. Oh. They were in, they have New York, LA. They were thinking about doing a, either a Dallas or Houston version. Yeah. And she was like, you know what? I would consider that because it's more about what I do that rather than sense. who I am. And so I think you just have to weigh you know, what am I going to get out of this? Because the reality is you're going to be on this show, and even if it's a hit, yeah, you, you might get four or five years. I think it's uncommon to go longer than that. I mean, yeah. you know, Real Housewives of Orange County is, I think, on their 10th or 11th season. Yep. That's uncommon. Right. And so I think you have to think, you know, this is sort of short-term pain for long-term gain. What, what am I getting out of this? How is this going to be a platform to get me somewhere else or further ahead in what it is that I really do? Yeah. So I just think you have to think, like, how does this make sense for me in the big picture? Yeah. Um, or if you just happen to be a housewife and you just want to do it for fun, <laughs> like, that's good, too. That's true. So, I mean, what would you think would be a oh-so-Cynthia type of show? Like, what would we include in that? See, I am much happier sort of being um, in the co-star role. <laughs> really? Yes. I don't necessarily need the spotlight on me, which I think is why I enjoy blogging so much. Is yeah. because, like, you know, for instance, like fashion blogging, it's all about you and pictures of you and yes. what you're wearing, and it's very much you, you, you. Yes. Whereas my blog, it's really about what I see. It's sort of the city through my eyes. It's right. really not about me, per se. I'm just showing you other things. So, I mean, it is about me because I'm telling you what I like. Yeah. But the focus is not so much on me. Right. Um, and I'm just more comfortable with that. And maybe that's a generational thing. Maybe it's just me. I don't know. Yeah. But it just um, – so, for me, I, I enjoy – sort of having what I call my Where's Waldo moments on the show, <laughs> on various shows. Like, literally, if there's a show filming here, I will figure out a way to get on it because I, I just like having my little moments. Your moments. Um, <laughs> but, like, that's good. I'm good with that. I don't, I don't necessarily need to be, like, the star. All right. Well, <laughs> see, and that's different, though, because I would feel like most people want that spotlight on them. So I think that's pretty cool. You're sticking to your authenticity that way. Um, I just know how hot that spotlight can be. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes and, sense. you know, I'm not a girl that I, I don't enjoy <laughs> sweating. So <laughs> The hot seat's too hot. The hot seat can be <laughs> awfully hot. So for season three, if there's going to be a season three. Well, we don't know yet because yeah. we're only a couple episodes into season two. All right. So we'll so see. We'll see what happens. What about um, predictions? I know that you've kind of lived through season two, but um, are there any predictions that you think can happen for season three? If there is a season three, like new, if there's going to be oh my. fresh housewives. Well, um, they added two new housewives this season. Yes. And I adore both of them, Deandra Simmons and Cameron Westcott, both fantastic additions to the show. Awesome. Um, I think really... What I hope people will do is just tune into season two because yeah. I think, again, with season one, they filmed this entire show not knowing it was going to be a Real Housewives. And so I think people were – it didn't quite fit the mold. Right. And so people were a little, like, put off by that. Like, mm -hmm. it just – fit. Mm -hmm. you know, why are they talking about charity all the time? Well, because that's the show they were filming. Right. And so I think with season two, the you know, the girls knew what they were coming in. That makes sense. And they came to play. Mm -hmm. So it's like we know what this is. You know, 
were dressed and ready to go, like, yes. let's do it. And so it's sort of like once somebody gave them the rules of the game, they mm -hmm. were like, okay, now we get it, we can compete. Gotcha. And so season two is so elevated awesome. beyond what season one was, just in terms of you know, not only appearance, clothing, and hair, because I think once you see yourself on national TV, <laughs> yes. you're like, holy moly, call yes. a stylist, you know. <laughs> uh, it's eye-opening. You found, you're like, I thought I looked so cute that day. What happened? <laughs> it's amazing what HD cameras can do to you. Yeah. <laughs> um, so the girls, they've really stepped it up in terms of hair and makeup and appearance yeah. because they knew they were real housewives. But also, I think, just in terms of production quality mm -hmm. um, and the storylines, yeah. it's just so much better executed and put together. Yeah. But I think it really feels like a Real Housewives now. Gotcha. And um, I think it could really be a contender, but we need people to tune in, get the numbers up yes, so that we get we need a season watch. three. Awesome. All right. Well, for the not Real Housewife, but is on Real Housewives of Dallas, Cynthia Smoot, <laughs> thank you so I much I call for myself coming. the head cheerleader. Yes. I'm, I love that. I'm team R-H-O-D all the way. Yes. All right, guys. Well, we can't wait for you guys to continue watching season two of Real Housewives of Dallas. Every and Monday, 9 o'clock Central Standard Time on Bravo. On Tune Bravo. in. Yes. All right, guys. Well, here's another show with Rebel Role Model, and we'll see you guys next week. Bye.